This video is brought to you by Sasoy. Sasoy, the innovators of spike boarding, stand up spike, and the creators of the original skateboard spike. Sasoy, become the motor. Hi, folks, and welcome to another Sasoy stand up spike KOM video. And it's all about up. And as you saw, you point up and you'll make it up. Everything happens with a Sasoy skateboard spike and a very well optimized spike board made by Sasoy. Here we are at High Point, New Jersey, pulling out of the Dairy Queen. Those of you who cycle in the area will be familiar. The Dairy Queen is the start point for the High Point cycling hill climb that happens in May and we are doing this uh, May the 30th of 2015 so we just pulled out of there and we're gonna stand up spike this little five mile climb which happens to be the tallest point in New Jersey State so we pull out and we are helped by our young friend Clark Adams of Westwood Velo Cycle Shop. Thank you very, very much, Clark. You made the big effort to come out on a road bike and help us capture this regional record, this regional KOM. So let's begin a little bit by analyzing what's happening with the stroke. Uh, you'll notice that we are mimicking very similar to double poling. Those of you who understand cross-country skiing can realize that the arms are at 90 degrees and that happens at the moment of engagement and the arms remain at 90 degrees and the back and the core is engaged throughout the power phase of the stroke. So these lower slopes of high point are not the steepest part, but they do pitch up just a little bit more than the center. As you can see, the pavement is really, really sweet, very new, nice, glassy, black, but there's a lot of remnants left over from the paving process, little tiny pebbles. So our camera is riding that white line and we're slightly off uh, to avoid the pebbles. Later in the video you'll see the tiniest little dismount. We were caught by a four or five millimeter pebble and you'll see how effective uh, the drops are at catching the board with the toe and remounting it very quickly. Please pay very close attention to the fact that stand-up spike only ha happens on the front side. There was the switch just a moment ago. Stand-up spike never happens on the back side because it's very inefficient for power transfer. You would never stand-up spike on the back side. The front side is a carved position. There's the switch right there and you'll notice we just take one foot forward, take the other foot backward. And that happens after a little bit of practice on flat terrain. So what you're seeing here is some expert stand-up spike that's happening by an athlete in four and a half years. So this athlete's been stand-up spiking for four and a half years and we wished we had video that we could show you in year one, month one, day one, this individual could not climb even a 10 foot lump. And here we go, up the highest point in New Jersey. So you can see here the speed is picking up a little bit as it flattens out. And what we're trying to do is push our hips, there's the switch, straight to the sky. So if we push the hips forward, we're gonna get the best extension forward 
and be able to maximize our stroke. We're also lifting up just a little bit in the heel and if it was a shorter duration of spike, we'd do that just a little more. Notice how the legs are staying very relaxed and the core is engaging along with the back once the spike makes contact with the pavement. Here we go, we're going to have a little flat section here, a little zip down, undo the collar just a bit, make ourselves a little more comfortable. Notice how the spike shaft is staying very parallel to the board and we're engaging and behaving very much like a classic Nordic skier in double polling and extracting as much power and speed as we can from only the upper body. And here comes the incline again. Cars pass, no problem. Hold your line, be respectful of all the traffic laws. And we're gonna start to dig in here again. And the steeper it becomes, the more compression we're gonna have in the legs. If you noticed, on the flat sections, there was no compression. There was only an upper body bob and a head bob. And as we begin to climb, there will be more bending of the legs. That's what we're referring to when we talk about compression. We're talking about the legs bending and the body coming down upon them. The steeper it gets, the more you will compress. The steeper it gets, the more you will compress the rear leg. So keep in mind, watch the arms. The arms are staying at a, full, at a 90 degree angle and engaging the back, especially along with the core. And the upper body is falling down upon the stroke. Notice as well, the head is not looking up. It's a peripheral vision that we're watching. We're also, we also have a camera. We have a camera bike so we can keep an eye on that. If we didn't have the camera bike pacing us, uh, we'd probably be taking a little more look-see more often to make sure that things were safe up the road. The more you look up the road, the more it will psychologically break you. There's a certain amount of disconnection that needs to happen with the distance in relation to your body. Or perhaps we're only in year five and we're newbies and these distances are flipping us out. <laughs> now, um, for the first time at least. But the higher we go, the more accustomed we get. But still, nothing makes you comfortable looking up. What you want to do is concentrate on the stroke. If you visualize something, visualize your entire body engaging in a very effective and efficient stroke. Your most important job is to inject that pavement with the spike and connect it successfully. Once you've connected it successfully, you can power into it. We will have one or two or three, I'm not sure how many here on this climb, failed injections or slight, um, how should we call them, injections that don't make it into the pavement and I know we come very close to spiking the rear wheel uh, one time here and of course we're going to actually disconnect once uh, one foot from the board as well. But as you climb remain calm, keep it steady and if you're not steady, if you're shivering, if you seem like you can't make the climb then you have no business being on that climb. When you begin to stand up spike train, you should try to be successful and fluid and strong in every climb you do. If not, you are one or two climbs above your skill and your strength level, strength and stamina level. Ratchet it back until you're climbing well over whatever it is you've chosen to climb. You should always feel comfortable and look more or less like this athlete, possibly a little more strained. And remember, everyone starts on a two foot lump and you go from there. The body will adapt to the load slowly. Pretty much um, existing Nordic skiers 
stand up paddlers a little bit will have upper body and core. You who crew are going to be missing um, highly adapted back muscles as well as some core muscles, but you also will be very well adapted for this. And all other athletes, you will be lacking. Um, you'll be at zero, so don't don't be in a hurry, and do yourself a favor and only attempt to go up things that you know you can successfully climb. So pay very close attention to the switch. When we switch, we really want to get that spike as close to the board as possible, but don't fret. You're going to see a lot of switching here and pay close attention to how sometimes the spike will go wide and that's important because we weren't able to make it come in tight to maximize the power transfer but you just want to get it over and down and halt any kind of reverse so on this particular pavement that we're on now on this grade um, the switch is happening pretty casual because we're carrying uh, a decent amount of speed uh, but we will find times here in this climb where the switch will be very quick and the requirement of getting that spike back into the pavement as soon as possible is there it is there it is there was the spike to the rear wheel and fortunately we didn't blow out our tip which sometimes can happen just like that it will blow out of the nylon so obviously the, the, the force wasn't that strong and of course when you are adapted and you begin to notice and feel that the spike is going someplace where it shouldn't whether that's your fender or whether that's your rear wheel or whether it's a small hole in the pavement and you know you're going to blow your tip in there you're going to just pull back so on that uh, miss spike there toward the rear wheel we pulled back at the last moment, otherwise more than likely um, we would have blown the spike tip and possibly popped off uh, the board. So that was successful because we didn't have another spike in the car, that's for sure. So here we go, we continue. Nice steady rhythm, breathing steady and easy. You want to breathe through the mouth and nose and we obviously can't drink. We've got the camel back on. It's pretty early in the morning and uh, not too hot. But if you begin to do climbs that are going to take you longer than uh, 60 minutes, try to make sure that the climbs are going to have some sort of flattened out section that's going to allow you to drink. So we're going to drink twice during this 46-minute uh, climb. And you'll see where we do drink and it will not be during the climbs. Um, we could grab that hose, shove it in our mouth, and go for a draw if we absolutely had to. Um, please understand that this is endurance athletics and that bonking is one of the first things you need to learn not to do. Bonking happens with hydration as well as uh, nutrition. Whatever goes out needs to come back in and uh, there obviously needs to be something in there when you first begin so eat before during and after exercise and make sure to uh, at least get a bagel and uh, some soy milk or milk into you uh, within 20 minutes after any hard endurance work and if you're going to do exercise over 90 minutes you're going to uh, even 60 minutes, you're going to need to replace electrolyte. So go ahead and Google and investigate electrolyte replacement and uh, choose what it is that you like to replace it with. Uh, we like salt stick. Go ahead and look it up. They're capsules. And for every 16 ounces of uh, fluid water, we mix in two capsules and it uh, blows away anything we've ever tried. It'll lay waste to Gatorade. Don't waste your money on Gatorade. Don't waste your time, don't get sticky, don't carry around gallons of worthless fluid, just carry around some salt stick and uh, find the water as you go. We believe it'll be effective for you. But um, at the start of any endurance event like this, you're going to want to make sure that you are completely hydrated and that means that you should be urinating clear with a decent amount of volume at the start. So we sweat out 
quite a bit of fluid on this ride even though it was early morning and relatively cool for summer so the rhythm keeps going as you can see and we try to stand on the X of the board or behind it and uh, there's the little switch you saw that it's just a foot forward and a foot back the 10 inch wide this is so a spike board deck has plenty of space to walk it and of course the 39 inch stand over length is pretty comfortable as well no no shorter board is going to make you feel comfortable and certainly if you haven't got three inches of drop you're not going to feel as stable and of course the fenders are keeping everything under the board no pebbles into the shoes and no way to spike your own wheels or step on your own wheels. In this case, we're only stand-up spiking, so we don't have to worry about any switch kicking. And up we continue, and uh, the climbing is fine, everything's steady. That shaft on that skateboard spike is staying perfectly parallel, and to do that, we need to shift the shoulder and the hip over so that foam handle stays just off to the side of our shoulders. Notice how that last switch, the shaft was over to the side a little bit, but we were summiting that little little uh, ridge there. And of course now we're up over this ridge, we're going to pick up a little speed. And Clark is doing a fantastic job of keeping a very good distance for us so that uh, the video looks plenty dynamic and you can see every nitty gritty little piece of what stand up spike king of mountain looks like and uh, we're dying to see what queen of mountain stand up spike looks like as soon as we find that queen where is she she's someplace and we're gonna find her all she needs to do is give us a call and uh, begin to train and make it up a significant climb We'd love to see her go up uh, the highest point in New Jersey in uh, 18 to 17 months. That, that could happen. We're getting a little sunshine here. Things are heating up. Sunshine always gives you a little more upbeat, but also makes you worried that you're going to overheat. Uh, so if you're going to attempt these kinds of climbs, uh, please do so when you're well adapted to the heat and out of the sunshine. Of course, early morning helps for traffic as well as we go up and as things get steeper you'll see that the power phase of the stroke is uh, shortened and not made as long even here you'll see that the foam handle is not traveling past the quadricep it's going straight down to the quad and notice the little bit of compression that's happening that rear leg is compressing a little more we're really trying to push those hips up to the sky as you come back. So try to take the leading edge, the top foam handle of the spike, and imagine that you're pointing it to the sky. Every time you return it, just point it straight up to the sky and keep the shaft on the same vector line. Keep that shaft at 45 degrees. It never comes forward of your feet right so if you start bringing it forward you're basically doing a forward catch here we go on our first drinking session it's always nice to have the power and the ability to one hand uh, to get that hose in there you're still popping off two or three strokes carrying speed and have a nice little long section here breathe gently through your mouth off the sides through the nose take your time relax never speed through any kind of drinking session Keep everything relaxed, don't stress up. We managed to carry a little speed through here. If we weren't drinking, we'd uh, be powering it up. But we lost a lot of fluid down around that first half of this mountain. Um, individuals with bigger muscles will sweat more. All of you skinny folks, you are gonna need a little less hydration. The larger the mass of the muscle, the more it heats up, the more it sweats, the more you're gonna need to cool it down. So. Muscular people have slightly higher 
hydration requirements and uh, especially us it's off the charts <laughs> so uh, we start with a full camelback stand-up spike is a camelback sport if you're coming from Nordic ski and you want to start doing big 90 minute climbs and you've got a belt with a cap that needs to be unscrewed well you tell me not quite sure when you'll be drinking and unscrewing your cap and removing your belt and tilting your head back using two arms with a spike between your legs stand up spike and spike boarding are camel back sports if indeed you like to stay hydrated so unlike cycling where you have your hands free all you need is a bottle this you will be going up hills and you will have your hands occupied so you just saw a good drinking technique and also if you're doing climbs for training when you get to the top you're going to want to have some hydration for yourself usually you need more than you think so as we can see eight in the morning on a Sunday high point has very little traffic and the uphill has two lanes this lane will finish and it will drop us off into a shoulder that's really nice as well now it's probably hard to perceive if you look really close near the wheels you're gonna see a lot of that gravel and somewhere here I forgot where but there will be the tiniest little dismount and we'll catch the board with our toe in the drop and that's what the drops are for amongst other things the board drops so that it becomes incredibly stable all you want from the board is for it to be your mount you are the motor and you want to successfully remain on the board you don't necessarily have to have a soy spike board but you're not going to enjoy the sport half as much on any other kind of board so Consider that if you want to buy a skateboard spike and get into this sport. You want a nice, super, super stable board that's going to keep you on top of it and allow you to ramp up your motor as high as it will go. So here we are climbing. We've stopped pushing our hips as far forward as we might be able to. Always remember to constantly monitor, try to keep those hips pushing forward. Sometimes when it gets a little steeper, it's a little more, a little more challenging to do that. But on your return, you want to snap, snap back up, bring those hips forward, and keep that skateboard spike super light on the return, nice and light. Snap it right back and get it back as quickly as you can. The faster you can get your return back, the faster you can begin to engage and carry speed carrying speed is so important in KOM and QOM stand-up spike not only for the switch but also to maximize the effectiveness and the efficiency of the power you're expending so if you are putting out a bunch of power and your return is slow you will slow down just a little bit before you're transmitting power again. So carrying speed is crucial. So arm cadence is very important to keep up high on the return. Not necessarily on the power phase. We're keeping a, a strong power phase going here because we're trying to we're trying to set a good regional record up this climb. Um, so you might not be going as fast, but your return on your stroke should be as fast as possible so that you can carry your carrying speed so you can maintain your carrying speed and it, it doesn't slow slow down so we're coming into some of the steep section here um, and we're slowing down just a little bit and you might be able to begin to see some of these rocks we're gonna catch a rock here someplace soon and uh, lose the board and just nip it and catch it and uh, we're gonna be okay and when it gets really steep, the stroke gets really short. See how short that stroke is? We're not even getting down near the quad. The handle's just going maybe about a foot or so. And when things get incredibly steep, you want to pull your elbows in, make really, 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 really short strokes. There it is. Boom. And we catch the board and pop back on. No problem. 
Those kinds of things are very disconcerting, by the way. And uh, when you are pressed under these steep situations, um, it's a very it's a very trying thing on your concentration. So remain focused, remain relaxed. There was a miss spike, and if you miss a spike, there's another one off the paint. And just keep going. Don't let it unnerve you. Just stay cool and go for the next one. And also, we were very close to summiting that little ridge there. And um, you do want to pay attention to what's happening up the road. You don't necessarily have to look up at everything, but you want you do want to know where the next ridge flattens out, and you want to spike towards it. And uh, don't think that you're gonna you're gonna quit at the next ridge. Just keep in mind that there's more, but there's relief, and that's important. Uh, to get a little relief, try not to do climbs that are, uh, you know, straight up without any flat sections. Um, you won't have a drinking spot, and uh, also in the beginning, you probably won't you won't make it. So we have a little feel back there to check the check the water, see how much was back there. And uh, sadly, we picked up a little leafy green here on our camera that's going to remain for the rest of the video. Uh, fortunately, most of the activity is going to happen on the uh, your your uh, right side that you're viewing, our left side, and there it popped off a little bit, no problem. So our camera went up the road just a little bit, give you a little wider view of what's happening here on High Point, and um, we didn't try to kill it here on this flat section. Uh, so much as we just tried to maintain a good tempo and a good speed. Uh, the communication between the uh, spiking athlete and the cycling athlete um, can get compromised if you're trying to maximize the speed. So we may have lost a good 15, 20 seconds in this area. Um, but hey, that gives uh, all you young Turks... a little more advantage to come after this 50-year-old athlete... Uh, who's weighing in at 176 pounds at 5'8". So all you fellas out there with a few less years and a little less weight, maybe coming in at 140, even 150 range at 5'9", you've got a good shot at this title. Uh, definitely give us a call and uh, we can come out with a bike and uh, film it and... Uh, Definitely categorize it as a KOM legitimate. And uh, for now, we're looking for a KOM, King of Mountain, all over the country. As soon as we find them, they'll win $1,000 and a very sweet title and begin to defend the Sasoy King of Mountain stand-up spike title. And once again, our queen, where is she? She just needs to demonstrate the prowess and the ability to make it up a significant climb like this. And uh, she will get the title, and she will receive a $1,000 prize. And, of course, she will then begin to defend the Queen of Mountain stand-up by title in these good United States. Slowly, we'll get the racing going, and there will be regional, statewide. And, uh, of course, it'll all blossom into some World Cup racing, or whatever we might call it. Here we go. Here's quite a bit of, uh, of loose gravel, you'll see. And this really slows us up quite a bit. We could have stayed with this bike. This, this hill, this little pitch right here is not so steep. But all that little gravel is going to slow you up and it's also going to unnerve you. Notice how we're just scooching back, trying to stay in the back of the board. Stay to the back of the board. If you have a little turbulence, a little uneven pavement or rocks, the front wheels go over, the rear wheels going to go as well. Now we're getting closer and closer to the entrance to the park. And there will be one final little rise, which this is it. And then we'll come up on this uh, entrance to the park and take a sweeping uh, left hand turn for the athlete. And we're picking up some speed here. We've finished the last ridge on uh, Route 23. And we're going to be pulling into the park. Now the park is going to have some very uh, broken up pavement and it's very important that you never spike into um, 
any of the holes in the pavement because you can bust off your spike tip. The spike really likes to have nice, flat, uh, solid pavement to bite into, um, and it doesn't like to dig into holes uh, that are loose, gravel, um, where the spike can get leveraged on and the carbide steel can pop out of the nylon or the carbide could just simply simply break. What the carbide steel likes is a nice solid power transmission where energy goes through, nothing's going left and right, tensions are being left inside the carbide, and you'll see the pavement as soon as we pull into there, and we're just about ready to do that, and the first real hard half, maybe I guess three quarters of this climb is, is now done, but high point is unrelenting and it's unrelenting to the very end the last 30 meters are just going to tax you and we will give an explanation of how you are going to make it past that last unrelenting kick uh, that is going to put a hurting on you so well i guess there's a little more to this climb than i thought before the the park uh entrance um so excuse me, but we're going to keep climbing on Route 23 before we take this left into here. My memory doesn't uh, serve me well. I'm not looking at the time code. There's the time code. We're 31.13 into this climb now. I can see. And um, you can spike into paint. It is possible. No problem. The interesting thing is that in winter, you really want to spike into paint. It's actually a little softer than the pavement. And and if you're worried about the Department of Transportation and tearing up the pavement, pavement is expandable and self-healing. And a little bit of spike uh, is not going to hurt anything. Spikes are made by a dozen ski companies and used worldwide all over uh, pavement conditions. So fret not. You could have a million people spike in this asphalt and you'd never know it. Um, we almost had the tiniest little dismount. What we happened here was uh, our right eyeglass got fogged up and we could not see through our right eyes. A high level of humidity and the inability to see through the right eye temporarily caused us uh, to be a little bit dizzy. And that's, and of course, the climb at the same time and being 30 plus minutes into this climb, uh, that was the little issue that we just had. Um, where we, we sort of faltered a little bit back there. But the eyeglass cleared up a little bit with some speed. Uh, a little air went through there and the fogging stopped. But when you're stand-up spiking and climbing, whether, uh, uh, whether things get loud, loud noises, or rocks, or temperature, or rain, just keep concentrating and visualizing your body and how it is executing the stroke and maintain calm and order keep your jaw relaxed probably try to be if you did a bit of babble try to be a little bit of babble babble into your chin and the more you babble a little bit keep that lower jaw relaxed the more your body's going to stay relaxed so if you can relax your jaw the rest of your body is going to follow. So keep a nice, relaxed jaw. If you're clenching your jaw, oh boy, the rest of your body is just going to clench up right behind it. So that's the little trick is to keep your jaw relaxed and that just unlocks the entire rest of your body to stay chill and stay relaxed. Okay, now we're definitely coming up to the top of 23 and we're going to pop right into this park and uh, get on with the business of finding our monument and stand up spiking to it under these slightly damp conditions. And there you can see a truckload of little rocks there. And we're just pounding right over them, no problem. There we go, there's some park buildings that we see. There's a little private residence up here um, on this side of the road that you'll see. I don't know exactly who lives there, but it's marked clearly as private residence. In we go to the park, it's 8 a.m., about 8.15 or 8.30, I think. So we're not gonna have any problems getting in. And we're on a bike, so neither the bike cam nor I need to stop and pay to get in, no problem. Pushing our hips straight up 
plenty of stamina, plenty of control. You can see this athlete has a sufficient base uh, to do what he's doing. And there's all the cracks. See those little cracks? And uh, we're being very, very mindful of making sure that we're visually inspecting the area where we're about to spike. You spike into one of those deep cracks where it's all loose and you can blow a spike. So as soon as you start seeing deep cracks uh, in pavement, go very, very carefully and pay very close attention to where you are putting your spike. The spike itself, when you're planting it properly in the right pavement, it should be nice and hard. If you ever feel anything kind of sandy, pull back. Pull back immediately and you might save yourself a blown tip. So soy's in the process of making quick release tips, but right now you blow a tip and you gotta boil some water and boil that tip off. Here we go, you can see how steep this is by how quick the cadence is and how short the power phase is. But it's a nice little chunky monkey and we go straight over it and we're looking for our monument because as soon as we see that, it is going to power us up. And right now you need to begin to think, I did not come all this way to be denied. You certainly did not. So it's going to be a little bit of a downhill here, but you need to start thinking about closing this mountain down. If you come to stand up spike this mountain, you need to really start to focus and concentrate. You're getting a sensational rest. Come on. After 30 minutes, you are going to have a fabulous rest right through here in this section, and you will be able to handle what is about to come at you. Because what's about to come at you is short, but it's steep. And the reward is the spike monument itself and you getting there. But it will be unrelenting. You're going to see it takes you and taxes you, and it becomes a very very big battle to secure your summit of this climb so during this time as soon as you get into the park really begin to mentally prepare yourself uh, for that last finish and you're gonna be fine you're gonna get the lake view here it's a great little appetizer or dessert however you like to think of it tweet tweet in nature Oh, everything's great. You just summited most of the hard part, and you're going to close it. You will close it. No problem. Remember, you didn't come here to be denied, and you've also come here prepared. Please don't come to High Point and try to summit it unless you are completely ready. Again, we just go back to what we said before. This particular athlete has summited every single climb that he's ever tried. So don't try to do things that you can't do and your development will be good, your psyche will be good, and you'll feel really, really good about the sport. Don't ever think that you can't climb something. You can, you just need to be well prepared for it. So there's our lake and it's a cute little lake. Uh, the top of this summit is uh, very interesting. It's a very flat summit at the top. It's very long. The park is very big. And then the monument itself sits on just, just another maybe 75, uh, 80 feet uh, of, of climb. Maybe more, maybe about 150. Uh, and we're, we're powering up to it. And uh, during a nice day, this will be filled with a lot of recreational users it's very very pleasant up here it's one of the most enjoyable summits uh, that we've ever been on because of its size and because of that little lake and the pavement is, is pretty good just keep your keep your attention paid to those uh, little cracks and believe it or not we're catching glimpse of every single one of them and making sure our spike doesn't go into it after a little while after your first 18 months of practice or so, you'll notice how you're able to actually hesitate just that tiny millisecond amount so that you don't spike into crevices. And we're going to get a little downhill that we get to zip straight into. Uh, the pavement's wet, so we're not taking any chances at all here uh, with any kind of fall downs. Uh, but the park is relatively empty. Uh, so we don't need to worry about anybody suddenly popping out using the park with us. Um, 
and giving us a surprise. So the park had just opened and a uh, tiny little tuck, a little pavement change near the summit, which is nice. The sweeping right-hander going up to the monument. And now we're going to have to really begin to think about why on earth we came here. We came here because the mountain is there. Since it's there, we're gonna stand up spike it. And by now, we've got all of it behind us. But yet, what remains is the absolute hardest part. There's no harder part of High Point than the final climb to the monument. It will ask everything of you, absolutely everything. And at this moment, what was being asked of us was incredibly taxing. And your answer needs to continuously be, I did not come here for nothing. I came here to make it. I did not come this far to not make it to the top of this monument. That's what we're thinking right now. I did not come this far. I did not just spike up all of Route 23 to be denied. Because right now, High Point wants to deny you. She wants you to not make it. You will not make it, she's telling you. And you just keep saying, yes, I will make it. And look up, but make sure you look up for not too long. And if you misstep, you miss spike, just dig it in again. Dig it in again. Keep going. Keep going. Keep spiking. It doesn't matter how fast you go. What matters is that you keep momentum up the mountain. Look at those tiny little strokes. Minuscule little power phase strokes and a super fast return. Inches. Half a mile an hour. One mile an hour. It doesn't matter. The bucket is going to fill. Look at how slow we're going, but look at how far we've gone already up this little, just nasty little booger of a climb toward the end of this climb. We're going straight up it. You think, wow, he's going so slow, but he's already, oh, you're already around the turn. You can't even see where the turn was. The monument's waiting, and we're after it. This is the probably most sophisticated part of stand-up spike because it's the most mental part. It's the part where the mind meets the body and the mind will break before the body. And in this particular sport, unlike in cycling, uh, you cannot sit and also you're not running so you can't slow down to the slowest little crawl. You've got wheels on your feet. If you falter, you're going to go backward. So it's a delicious little game of uh, concentration mixed with, uh, with a body requirement like no other sport that we've ever really done. Um, but here we are uh, beginning to look at how much is left. Uh, 20 yards, 10 yards, 10 feet, 5 feet. And just constantly saying, I did not come here to be denied. I did not come here to be denied. I did not go this far to not make it. I did not go this far to not make it. I did not come this far to not make it. Imagining stopping here after all this way from the DQ. Absolutely not. Stay relaxed. Dig in and you're going to make it. Remember, this athlete weighs 176 pounds at 5 foot 8. It's a lot of mass to have to get up that mountain. You are not looking at a KOM climber. In the years to come, people who are KOM stand-up spike climbing are going to blow your mind how fast they go. If this was summited in... Uh, 46 minutes by this athlete, we're going to venture to say that 40 minutes is certainly within reach and certainly probably even 36 minutes, no problem. Um, and there's going to be one final little turn. We're going to pop up here where the cars park. And uh, a week ago, we summited this without video and we stopped at the car park. 
There's the monument to the right, the spike as they call it, spike to spike. And we're gonna sweep this and we are actually gonna make it to the very top this time. Here we go for the first time ever. Stand up spike, KOM, King of Mountain in New Jersey, highest point, King of the Mountain in stand up spike. Up we go, now millions can follow, setting a nice old man time, fat old man, square meatball of a man, killing it straight to the top so that now all you little climbers can come on up behind and uh, just rage up this mountain in great fitness. There was a miss spike and we caught it. Notice how fast you will go backwards unless you make it over there. Not much left here, five or six more spikes up and around the corner. The bike is gonna sweep. And folks, we just made it to the top of the highest point of New Jersey State. And unaided by any legs at all or feet, upper body core, stand-up spike. The sister sport of Nordic Ski, Nordic Movement, is going to rip you, folks. So give us a call at uh, standupspike.com. The skateboard spike makes it happen. And where are you kings? Where are you queens of New Jersey? I know you're out there. Come on. Let's go. And we all go up. We get fit. Westwood Cycle, thank you very much. Clark Adams, you're the best. Westwood Cycles for over 70 years. Cyclists, friends, and family have trusted Westwood Cycle for all their cycling needs. With more than 500 bicycles in stock for children and adults and more than 300 on display, they've got a bicycle for everyone. And thank you so very much again, Clark Adams, for answering the phone and making the grade, showing up, and making New Jersey spikeboarding history happen. Thanks a bunch. Keep the rubber side down. Transport Sports, Westwood Cycle, coming through. Thank you very much. This video is brought to you by Sasoy. Sasoy, the innovators of spikeboarding, stand-up spike, and the creators of the original skateboard spike. Sasoy. Become the motor.